And I'm wondering, can this fit into that model? You know, how does the gift economy or seeing, um, you know, like seeing these medicines or anything as sacred, how can it fit into our current model of capitalism or can it? Or do, is this where it needs to be this whole, um, I keep saying like, is this whole model of, of e economics that we currently have, is it gonna collapse? Is it gonna just go away one day? I mean, I have a prayer the that model, it, it does, yeah. you know? The current, the current model of economics is inconsistent and incompatible with the consciousness that is emerging mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. and it's incompatible with the story of interbeing, the story of reunion, the new story. Uh, and so it is uh, hard to interface with it when you are doing something of the new story. And if you try to shoehorn it into existing economic models, then it gets distorted and reduced so yeah like you know it's not just with psychedelics i mean um music and film they were supposed to be liberated by the internet but what happened is that artificial scarcity was created in order for people to be able to continue to profit from it and yeah so that's what like like the whole edifice of intellectual property law is itself um i would call it pathological mm -hmm. like like the term of patents and copyrights keeps getting extended and extended and extended at, at the founding of this country it was like 14 years now it's like 70 years after the death of the creator for copyrights so like harry potter you won't be able to make your own harry potter stories freely until like the year you know, 2140 or something probably right, like that. So, so like, and, and like in the psychedelic world, I, I, I heard that there was a patent for the technology of, of one practitioner, one person taking medicine with headphones on listening to trans, trancy music. Mm -hmm. Like someone decided to patent that. So basically patents are kind of an enclosure and it comes it, they seem quite natural if you believe that individual human beings are actually the authors of their ideas. But I don't see myself that way. I didn't create the ideas that I speak. They come through the collective mind. They come from source. They come from spirit. And, and so the people who are critiquing the economic models around psychedelics, I think they have a valid point. Mm -hmm. We did not create the brain and its neurotransmitters and and the plants and the the toads and even the chemistry like the chemistry is also in a sense discovered it could be through a, a flash of inspiration that's one of the ways that the guardians intervene in our reality they offer someone a flash of inspiration and they come up with a an invention and it could be a psychedelic compound it could be you know a energy coherence mat or something like that um, could be a, a poem it could be an idea right that's that's the intervention so if we properly understand ourselves and reality then intellectual property does not make sense and it's actually a form of enclosure of privatizing something that is actually supposed to be in the commons mm -hmm. and we are in that legacy reality right now, we are in those legacy systems. So I'm not gonna condemn somebody for doing their best to live and engage in those systems. But let's recognize where we want to go so that when the step is available to us to go in that direction that we do it and don't step back into the past. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, no, it's um it's it's been a hard thing to grapple with, right? It's like we're living in these two worlds or we're stepping into a new potential of of the world that exists in more harmony. And cuz it is it you know, it's interesting just hearing this. Um when I interviewed Paul Stamets a few years ago and he told me he's actually putting in protective patents. You know, I I actually started crying during our interview. I was like, "Wow, this is kind of a strange world that we're we're now having to put in protective patents for psilocybin strains. I mean, 
just to protect it from the other, you know, companies or people that want to take it, right? And it comes back to this this model of the separation, right? The scarcity, like what is- Yeah, I don't know if I buy that. I mean, you, no. if you put something in the public domain, then it becomes unpatentable by anybody. So why do you have to patent it yourself? Hmm. Maybe there's something I'm not understanding here, but- um, <laughs> I mean, I think, I mean, I don't know. He didn't explain it, but I think what it was was this idea that um, there are companies out there who are now trying to patent psilocybin strains so that they don't become public domain. They become now right. owned by a pharmaceutical company, right? which is kind of crazy to think about. I mean, even a lot of people have this concern, especially around something like a mushroom that grows, you know, inherently naturally, right? Or a plant. That is yeah. is public domain. It's part of. It's for the all. It's it's earth. But you know, this is the the model of separation, right? Let's come in and take it and make money off of it and make it, um, you know, only attainable by me as a corporation because it's under my patent now. I mean, this has been happening, but with you know, with Monsanto and Bayer and Syngenta, you know, going finding indigenous cultivars, you know, and modifying them a tiny bit and patenting them. And basically like, this is, yeah, this has got to stop. How do we, but yeah. how do we get out of this? You know, other than just say no, you know, or boycott it or not buy it or not shop on Amazon or whatever it is like how, you know, cause it is, you know, especially for those, this desperate, you know, the, the people that are desperate for the healing, right. Or people that are like, I've tried everything. Um, I heard that ketamine's going to work. Let me go work with this ketamine company. Um, or I heard that psilocybin will um, help my fear of death. And now the only place I can get it is from this one corporation because they're the only ones that have, you know, the legal control that's distributing yeah. it to the legal therapists. Like, how do we, how do we stand apart from that world? That sometimes seems like we are heading in that direction where there's a lot of fear around, like, are we going to lose this? Ab I mean, we're not going to lose our ability to grow our own psilocybin and work with it. Well, we could lose our ability to do that. I mean, there ha there mm -hmm. there has to be. I mean, in some of some of the uh, cannabis laws in some states, like you know, you can grow it in your gigantic indoor concentration camp for plants. You know, but you can't grow it in your garden. So, like, there is a level where we need to get active politically mm -hmm. and stand for what's right. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm.